uh, great honor to, uh, to be able to speak here. And thanks for uh, Professor Wei Dong Ruan uh, invitation. So uh, uh, today I will uh, talk about uh, uh, a subject uh, called uh, uh, collapsing Uh, collapsing remaining uh, manifold uh, under the assumption where uh, the section curvature uh, uh, is section curvature uh, uh, bounded. And curvature bounded. Uh, so uh, they don't ask me to uh, give a, a kind of a, a introductory uh, 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 level at the beginning, at least. So I try to do that. All right. So this talk concerns uh, a Riemannian manifold. So I have a manifold. Riemannian means you have metric. My remaining structure, and uh, uh, for the remaining metric, uh, one particular measurement we call section curvature uh, uh, of the metric, section curvature, which basically tells you uh, this, right? If you have a manifold, uh, you have a point. Since it's a manifold, this point, you have a tangent space. And uh, if you have a metric, then uh, you can define you have a so-called connection, levy shift connection, which give you a way of differentiate a vector field, uh, 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 which compatible with the remaining metric. Then you can define so-called geodesic, right? If uh, uh, C is a curve, right, a uh, uh, smooth curve on the manifold. Uh, uh, C of zero equal to uh, uh, point P, then you can uh, solve this equation equal to zero. So O exists, this is ODE, so you have a, a solution would be a geodesic. Right. So just quickly reviewed geodesic, which is the a straight line uh, locally, I mean, finally, test me straight line like on the plane, right, an extension of this. So using the existing geodesic, you can define map for each tangent vector on tangent space to uh, a geodesic uh, whose tangent vector uh, is x. You can have this. Then you can define map, we call exponential map, from tangent space to the manifold. At least locally, this is the diffeomorphism. Diffeomorphism locally, a small neighborhood. OK. so. Uh, the section curvature basically like this. Uh, so if you give a two plan, a two plan, then since it's local diffeomorphic, uh, you can have a small piece. You can have a, a embedded two-dimensional surface. Uh, for the two-dimensional surface, uh, you can define Gaussian curvature. And actually, the section curvature of the two plan. Uh, yeah, it's actually Gaussian curvature uh, of the two surfaces, the two at uh, that point, at uh, that point. All right, it so basically measures the kernels of manifold. I mean, uh, for instance, like sphere, like uh, a sphere, right? Uh, so the Gaussian curvature here tells you the uh, the kernels corresponding to the plan relative to the plan. Plan has a curvature equal to zero, Gaussian curvature. And this uh, uh, unisphere has curvature equal to one. It tells you uh, uh, how the manifold curve, right? Uh, the, and this tells you the different uh, uh, metric structure. All right. So in the Manning geometry, uh, you have metric, you have curvature. So the question is, uh, a core question is this core problem is how the information in geometry, like uh, uh, geometry of G, uh, reflect 
the topological structure and the lying manifold. Without metric, it's a topological space, right? You have topological structure, you have uh, like fundamental group, homology group, homotopy group, etc. Right? Uh, how this information on the topology of the manifold and uh, vice versa. Once you have topological information, you want to know uh, what kind of geometry it allowed, right? You have some restrictions. For instance, there is a, a so-called half conjecture. It says S2 plus S2 uh, does not admit a metric of which section curvature positive. Observe that the product metric, standard product metric, round metric, has section curvature non-negative, right? Has section curvature non-negative. But the conjecture says this does not meet metric positive section curvature. And it's a very simple question. If you have certain topology, you should restrict certain geometry, right? And uh, this question is still open, uh, very old question. So, uh, Okay, so how this, uh, uh, so, so this is the basic question in remaining geometry, how this question related to the topic here, right? So, uh, so still belong to this uh, uh, problem, right? Geometry, how the geometry related topology, but uh, here the geometry is such kind. The geometry here, the condition for this geometry is, if I use this, you know, section curvature the metric, right? Assume the section curvature is bounded by some constant. Uh, if the manifold is compact, I can always reskew the metric, be, uh, the constant by one, where the injectivity readers, uh, injectivity readers of the metric uh, is very small. So that's the code. This corresponding to the title, collapse the manifold. So where session curvature is bounded, right? Now like this, uh, now like this. Very small sphere. Very small sphere. If the radius is R, the curvature is one over, uh, uh, one over R take square root. So R go to zero, curvature blow up, all right? And uh, if curvature is bounded, uh, at the same time, injective T reader is small. Now, what would be the phenomena in this situation, right? So, my example is trivial one, is flat manifold. Excuse me, what is the injectivity Okay, yeah. Injectivity reader is this, uh, at each point, right, you know this is a diffeomorphism. Uh, but when you go the ball getting larger, it may not be diffeomorphism, like a sphere, right? Uh, if you have a ball, radius pi, inside the pi, exponential map, fold down without this point. Without this point, a diffeomorphism of a ball. So injected to this point is the largest radius of the ball where this map is diffeomorphic. It's a diffeomorphic to a Euclidean ball. But injected to radius manifold is every point you have the ball, you consider the minimum among all this, right? Like this manifold. Here, injected readers are very large, but here it's small. So injected readers are considered like this, for the manifold. When we say injected readers are small, we say for OX. Every point is small, not just uh, like this, everywhere is small. Now I give you an example, uh, it's called flat manifold. Flat manifold is, uh, let's con consider this is compact. We, we always assume this is compact. Flat manifold is where section curvature, right? Uh, let's call this N, uh, F, flat, stand for. Uh, if I, uh, I assume F is a remaining manifold, it automatically has a metric. Sometimes it directly write down like this. Section curvature is identical to zero. Then, okay, maybe I should write down the metric instead. Flat manifold, you have metric, right? Uh, so the flat means the section curvature is identical to zero. Now, if you uh, have section curvature equal to zero, then you define new metric, epsilon, 
equal to epsilon square g not you rescue the metric we rescue the metric the curvature behave like a, uh, by a constant rescaling constant a change original is zero so this still flat so this condition need right this condition need but when you rescue whatever you have a compact manifold the diameter the diameter d uh, is finite number it's compact it's finite number diameter means uh, the distance bet uh, the, di the larger distance any two point larger distance any two point since it's compact it's finite number you find a number you rescale the metric by a small epsilon epsilon very small so you rescale you get this metric right you get this metric still flat this metric still flat however if this getting small, diameter getting small, uh, this condition 35, I will pull, right? Since injective readers cannot exceed the diameter, the manifold. So it's, it's everywhere small. Flat, this is the example. Uh, and there are other examples, not flat, and also satisfy this condition. We will, come, uh, we will, uh, we will discuss that uh, later. So what's the question? So if you have such kind of geometry, right? We call collapsing. Uh, why we call collapsing? You see this manifold and this manifold, uh, the, they, they just match you by rescaling. This is the G naught flat. This is epsilon G naught, right? It's manifold distinct almost. So we, we call collapsed, collapsed. I mean, before distinction, right? Uh, the question is, once you have this kind of geometry, can you conclude that this manifold is a flat? I mean, this manifold uh, is, we know flat manifold, right? Uh, by a theorem, so it's called the Bieberbach theorem. Uh, this theorem uh, is like this. If manifold flat, you look at the universal carving space. Universal carving, this is a universal Covering. So this would be simply connected manifold, right? Curvature identical to zero. So by the uh, classification uh, of Catan, right? You have a, a flat manifold. I mean, local Euclidean flat, right? So uh, it's this one is Rn. Simply connected, it's Rn. This is the uh, uh, result. Then uh, this manifold is a quotient Rn, and Bieberbach theorem says. The quotient group, this one is Rn modulo gamma, the free action. This is the deck transformation. Gamma is fundamental group. And then the Bieber-Walker theorem says gamma uh, has contains a free abelian group of dimension n if this is n-dimensional free abelian group such that the quotient is bounded by some constant depending on n, depending on dimension. If n equal to 2, then this number is 2. Either it's a torus or clamp bottle. Only have two possibilities, whose universal covering is a, a plan. So that's, uh, uh, you see, if it's a flat, right, then you, you, you have a theory to recover the manifold completely. If you have such kind of geometry, right, flat geometry, it's particular, this includes flat geometry. Right? You have flat geometry, it's a collapsed. Now the question is, if it's collapsed, how far you can conclude that the manifold, uh, in some sense, like, uh, uh, like this topological structure? So that's the one question. Uh, this is the extremal case, right? And, uh, Flat. So, uh, so, uh, so the question is, right? So first, a fact is, right? Uh, if uh, uh, if uh, f g naught uh, is flat, flat means section curvature identical to zero. Then you can conclude that the manifold. Here I use n, and now I use f, right? So this is f, fn. 
f n. All right. So f is actually diffeomorphic to R n modular a uh, free group action, discrete, right? This is a fundamental group, group action, and gamma contains free abelian group of dimension n and uh, the index is bounded by a constant depending on dimension. This is a constant depending on dimension. All right. So basically, you, uh, you, you almost determine the diffeomorphic type of the manifold up to a certain uh, finite possibilities. Right. So that's the classical theorem. Now, uh, a question, actually, you can, uh, you can make the question smaller related to this example is if, if section curvature, if right, I'm G satisfies this condition, satisfies, right, the curvature is bounded where diameter and the diameter of the metric is very small. Let's see, uh, very small, less than one. Flat manifold admits such a phenomenon, right? You can have a metric, curvature is zero, diameter go to zero, right? How far uh, the topology of M from the flat case from F, right? So that's the question. Geometry topology, right? You have geometric uh, phenomena. It turns out that to answer this question is quite different to answer this question. This question you don't need any. You're just using classical result. You have flat manifold Euclidean, where right? you have uh, this so-called uh, Bieberbacher group, right? Acting freely, discontinuously on Euclidean space, because the assumption group Euclidean space is, uh, uh, is has been studied uh, very clearly. So it's not uh, it's quite uh, you know like a uh, like classical result. You can conclude the topology. However, to to answer this question, you need a big machinery, and this was initiated. Uh, initiated by uh, uh, Gormov. That's called collapsing uh, Riemannian manifold with bound section curvature. Now I try to uh, explain, all right? So we start with uh, uh, the, the, the general uh, theorem, sin, right? In Riemannian geometry, basically, certain geometric information you want to conclude topology and other way around, right? Uh, uh, so let's uh, consider this question. This question uh, was uh, answered by Gramov in the late 70s uh, in his famous paper, uh, Almost Flat Manifold. So let me first write down the answer, then uh, uh, all right. So before that, first I define so-called new potent manifold, new potent manifold. Uh, so what is new potent manifold? Like example, uh, A is simply connected. Uh, new potent Lie group. Now what is a Lie? We know Lie group, right? What is a new potent? New potent basically means, right? If you have a G is a group, you take any elements alpha, beta, belong to group, then. This alpha, beta, this symbol means alpha, beta, alpha inverse, beta inverse, the commutator. And the new potent means uh, uh, if you do this, you have alpha 1, alpha, uh, let's say k belong to this. Then you do commutator uh, consecutively, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k minus 1, alpha k. For any k elements, you do like k times commutator, they come up with identity, I mean, identity E. You call such group new potent. So new potent group actually, if a first level equal to zero, that means it's abelian, right? If a first level always come to zero, um, identity, then this is abelian. So this kind of, uh, this group is next to the abelian, has the commutativity for the, uh, for the product. So, uh, new potent group, like the example for new potent group is this. You can 
this is called a Heisenberg group, right? You have a matrix one, 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 three by three matrix. You have x, y, z, where x, y, z are real numbers. This is an upper triangle matrix, uh, the multiplication. This is invertible, so this is the Lie group. And this group is Newport. And k, in this case, k equal to 2. Two, two times become identity, but it's not. OK, uh, so new potent manifold is equal to a manifold new potent. If that's equal to uh, well, uh, hmm, this one, it's a quotient by uh, where uh, gamma is uh, co-compact. Uh, uh, discrete subgroup. All right, you have a uh, you have a discrete subgroup. You take a quotient. Uh, this quotient is because the subgroup acting freely on the space. You take a quotient. You get a manifold. You get a manifold, but not necessarily Lie group because this may not be normal subgroup. You get a manifold. This manifold we call new potent. All right. So uh, in this case, uh, in this case, right, if you take a quotient gamma equal to this uh, subgroup, which is one 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 zero zero zero, I'm an R, where you choose I'm an R are uh, integers instead of all real numbers. So that's a discrete subgroup. You take the quotient, you get a new potent three manifold. All right. So that's uh, uh, the new potent manifold. And uh, now I stay here, which really answers this question. Theorem, this by uh, uh, Misha Gramov, I think it's 78. The theorem says this, right? So I am in this compact uh, manifold. I mean, should I write down matrix? I should write down matrix. N dimensional manifold, uh, assume you have the following condition, right? Uh, actually, the condition can be, uh, can be uh, interpreted in different ways, but let's just stick with this. Assume section curvature G less 1 and diameter G is less than a constant depending on epsilon. So this is the uh, uh, existence. A uh, constant depending uh, uh, on uh, epsilon, uh, on n, all right? This is a very small constant. If the diameter is sufficiently small, then, then you can actually say something about the manifold, right? Then there is a finite covering. Uh, then the manifold satisfies this. Uh, picture. It's a finite covering which is diffeomorphic to a new potent. This is a new potent manifold. And uh, such that this uh, 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 this covering, right, this covering, uh, this is like a, a omega n covering. So omega n is a constant. I mean, this is not only n. This is covering. It's uh, uh, maybe I write like this, right? The fundamental group. I'm. This is a subgroup, right? Because this is a covering space. So the fundamental group of this is gamma because this is simply connected. Did I write down simply connected? Yes, simply connected, right? So the fundamental group of this manifold is gamma. So this constant gamma uh, less than omega n. So that means the covering, how many fold the cover is at the most gamma. And gamma is a constant. All right. Now, <coughs> so that's a theorem. That's a theorem. And conversely, this is true. Conversely, I mean, conversely, any uh, such manifold, so any MN with such a structure admits a metric uh, 
satisfies this condition, satisfies this condition. Uh, admit metric uh, satisfying the condition for any epsilon positive. Given any epsilon satisfy, you can pick a metric. This is inverse even stronger. It's this basically this theorem says once you have bundle curvature, once the manifold squeeze close to a point, then you know what the topo uh, you can identify topological type of the manifold, diffeomorphic type in this case. This is diffeom. If you read the Bieberbacher theorem, right, it has a building subgroup, boundary index, if you take n uh, height n equal to Rn modular Zn, right, then that's a covering uh, Mn, right? In, this, in that same way, you stay like this. Uh, in Guamov original uh, paper, the condition this is equivalent to say the the maximum section curvature uh, times diameter uh, a square is less than epsilon n. And this one, if you rescue the metric by a constant, this this one uh, can the number cancelled out exactly. Uh, uh, epsilon, uh, well, epsilon, you can make uh, epsilon, uh, epsilon. Right, you, if you make epsilon square, uh, yeah, that's still dependent on it, yeah. So this, uh, these two conditions are equivalent. But this one is the scaling environment, this one, uh, you normalize, you can always make a diameter equal to one, then the curvature, equal to uh, uh, section curvature less than one, so diameter go to the very small. You can always, because this is rescaling, it's become this. All right. So that's, uh, uh, that is the theorem, right? Uh, in proving this theorem, the, the, the idea is quite, oh, the difficulty facing proving this theorem is quite different from the classical one. So you kind of, you have to uh, uh, kind of uh, using the uh, so-called grammar of house of convergence. So this introduced the notion, so-called, that has been uh, uh, widely used in modern uh, Riemannian geometry and uh, uh, some related field, the convergence, uh, convergence, all right? So, th so that's the one theorem. It's a code, uh, this usually considered the cornerstone uh, in the collapsing theory. It's basically give you a classification out of these two conditions, the diffeomorphic classification, all right? Uh, out of this, then uh, there, maybe I should say, that after this theorem, uh, there are people, uh, Chigar, Guamo, and uh, Fukaya, uh, they studied uh, uh, collapsing in a more general context. So they basically, they uh, I have to introduce the convergence before uh, before really, uh, yeah, okay, before we really say more about this, all right. So, uh, so, uh, this, so by this theorem we understand, right, the collapsing phenomenon of this boundary curvature really related to so-called new Newport structure, right, new Newport structure, but in this theorem, you are, uh, how you get uh, from this condition, you get uh, a new person group, right? That's a pretty uh, 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 right, subtle point, right? You have a metric, a geometry. If you can perturb the metric, you, you don't have any symmetry, right? You can slice the perturb metric, curvature still remain bounded, right? These injectivity readers still small everywhere. However, you have no symmetry, right? So, out of where, uh, you get this symmetry, right? That's the uh, one question you have, right? How, how you see a, a legal structure out of this uh, uh, geometry? So uh, that's basically uh, basically uh, from some kind of convergence. Now I'd like to uh, so-called uh, define notion, uh, the notion uh, of so-called Gramov, uh, Hausdorff convergence. Okay, 
So one of the hostile work convergence concerns a kind of a, a space which put all manifold into that actually for all compact metric space, right? So classical hostile distance, hostile distance. Uh, let me uh, uh, quickly review, right? So X D be a metric space. Let's see uh, metric space. Then you consider a subset X. That's all uh, subset X, which is compact. All right. So you consider the collection of all compact subsets. Then the classic hostile distance defined like this, right? If you have two compact subsets, A, A prime. Now you define a number associated to this. You call distance between two subsets. Defined to be in favor of O epsilon, such that this denotes the neighborhood of uh, one set contain another and vice versa. A neighborhood A prime contain A. So here is a big space X, here is A, here is A prime. What is the, the distance right, of the two sides? It's called hostile distance. Uh, it's, uh, you take a neighborhood of that, it contains the smallest neighborhood contains A prime. You take the smallest neighborhood of that contains A, then you take in femur, all right? So this measure global, uh, the globally closeness of the two subsets. And easy to check that if the hostile distance here the compact play role, if equal to zero, the A has to be equal to A prime. And also uh, uh, easy to check the triangle inequality. So the conclusion is this space of this, with respect to this, is a metric space. Not only is a metric space, and it's a complete metric space. Completeness requires a little bit of argument. So that basically allows to you to consider, so once you have metric space, you have consider convergence, right? You have, have a convergence. Uh, uh, you have kind of uh, 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 Cauchy sequence and so forth. And uh, so that was known uh, uh, in geometry a long time ago. Uh, in the uh, in late 70s, and uh, uh, basically, Grandma tried to prove this theorem. He invented uh, the notion, uh, the convergence. Actually, not this one, actually, uh, related to this one, it's called. Uh, uh, Prove algebraic uh, 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 problem, right? Uh, 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 right. Uh, any uh, a group with uh, 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 with uh, 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 the most polynomial growth is new potent group. Uh, where he introduced the notion of uh, uh, this. Now I next I extend this to so-called gamma. This is a house of distance. Now what is the gamma house of distance? Basically. One of he consider, right? This require all the metric space, all the metric space has to be sitting inside one big metric space. Now, gamma house of distance is this x y is just compact metric space. Then gamma introduce a distance called gamma house of distance between x y. It's considered all the infimum of epsilon such that, I mean, all this uh, D, uh, house of distance Z, I'll explain Z later, X, Y, uh, you consider uh, the house of distance. Well, what is the Z? Where uh, Z is a metric space, compact, I mean, met, uh, uh, metric space, and, and X, uh, embedding Z, Y embedding Z, isometric embedding. This means isometric embedding. Then you consider all possible Z's, all possible Z's, you take the house of distance, right? Remember this is a subset, you already have house of distance defined. Now, uh, for any X, Y, you can have Z, right? For instance, Z can be taken like uh, X cross Y cross uh, zero, one. X embed to x cross 0, y embed to y cross 1, right? That's a metric embedding. 
you, you can at least have one. I mean, you can you take infimum of this. This is abstract, abstract extension of house of distance. Then the amazing thing is this. It's easy to check. Uh, maybe I can uh, erase here. Use the, this one from our theorem. It's easy to check uh, that gamma house of distance x y equal to zero if and only if you can say x equal to y, x isometric to y. So if you let this space isometric isometric class classes of compact metric space. All right? Then this space modular gamma, I mean this become a uh, this is a complete metric space. And that includes all compact Riemannian manifold, this space. So you have distance, then the distance allows you to talk about the a sequence of convergence, right? Now, uh, so know that this includes all compact Riemannian manifold. Now, what's the meaning if you have a sequence, Cauchy sequence, many manifold in this is convert, right? What would be the limit? And uh, uh, <laughs> so, first, what is a Cauchy sequence in this, right? So, so imagine, right? So, uh, first, this space, uh, the first question before you talk about convergence, you understand what is a Cauchy sequence? Cauchy sequence, right? So the Cauchy sequence, obviously, you can. So if if you have sequence in this is Cauchy, you immediately conclude that this space getting globally getting getting closer closer, right? So immediately you conclude that first the diameter of x i has to be uniformly less than a constant, right? You can have diameter one larger, one small, right? They, they, they are they are actually close. It's not possible. Secondly, this is very important. Uh, say any epsilon positive, you can find so-called epsilon net. In the in, so what is epsilon net? It means you have a space. It's a, a certain point. Such as this point xi is this is small xi. I should let's see. Uh, yeah, xi. Xi in x such as the, the distance xi xj is bigger than epsilon i is not equal to j, and the whole space is covered by the ball radius epsilon at xi. It's the largest number. Uh, uh, the 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 uh, no larger the yeah the largest number they are epsilon separate inside the space, but the whole thing uh, covered. So if you have you you can imagine right if you have space globally it's almost the same right. So then uh, you can any epsilon uh, you can find this such that right the the number of this uniformly bounded. Depending only on constant, depending only on epsilon. Then depending on the sequence. Then depending on the sequence. So that's the global closeness, really, the consequence is. And actually, this is sufficient condition. If you have sequence, it's a diameter uniform, you have sequence compact matrix with diameter uniform bound, this we call uniform epsilon net. The number of epsilon net is uniform bound depending on epsilon, then this sequence. Contains a convergent subsequence. Yes. The capital N means net. I assume this capital N means a net, something like. Net. Yeah, net. Uh, I don't understand this. This is x plus capital on the left. Yeah. This one, right? This one. 
Uh, things like that. If you have a space, right? You have a space like this. Oh, you have uh, absolute positive, right? Yes. Then you can match with space. You can put a point here, the absolute separate, but you can only put a certain point. So first you start with x. What is x? X is a uh, uh, matrix space, compact matrix space. Uh, uh, define no point. It's a set. It's a set inside of X. That's right. It's a set of X. Okay. It's a, a certain finite many point, okay. such that these points are separate absolute distance, okay. par uh, okay. piecewise. I mean pairwise. Okay. Then you can. This number is the uh, uh, the let's see uh, the largest number, oh. largest number. You can put in. So yeah, that's uh, uh, absolute nine. So really, the Cauchy sequence corresponds to two conditions. First, the diameter uniform bounded. Secondly, the absolute net, the number of, this means, sorry, I should say, this means the number, number of absolute net. I use absolute value. A number uniform bounded, depending on the dimension. Then depending on the epsilon, then depending on the sequence, which one you choose. Uh, if you just think roughly, right, if you look this, each one, if you replace each, each of these space by its absolute net, then you have a subsequence converge because of this condition. But that's only scattered upon. But you, if you uh, make the scattered upon denser and denser, eventually you can get the limit. So that's uh, uh, roughly like that. Uh, OK. Now let's go back to this. Right? That's the convergence. This is a structure, a of established. Uh, this gives you a uh, 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 platform, right? You can, I mean, you, first, you want to transfer the Cauchy sequence condition to a manifold condition. Now you want to know, if I have sequence manifold, right? And what conditions, I can guarantee that this sequence has co subsequent converge. If it have converge, then you have limit. Once you have limit, give you something you can, uh, you can study. Uh, so this, let me just write down this theorem, so-called uh, Brahma compactness theorem. It says this, I'm in a sequence, right? And uh, uh, Ricci curvature, I'm in uniformly bounded below by some constant. You can always rescue a constant by one, negative one, bounded below by negative one. So Ricci curvature has a lower bound. Diameter has upper bound. Since you rescue this as no, uh, uh, normalized curvature, so diameter just a bound. Once you have that, then uh, you conclude that uh, uh, you can find a, a subsequence and an IK which must convert in gamma half of distance, right? This is a in this way, this way is complete, right? Uh, so then must converge to some space. This is a compact matrix space. So that's Gorma. So basically, Gorma will check that uh, this condition is satisfied, the two conditions. This one is OK, right? Already in the condition assumption. So only thing is turn the rich curvature lower bound to a uniform control of absolute net of this manifold. And that use, uh, uh, so uh, using the so-called Gramov, uh, uh, Bishop Gramov, uh, Bishop volume comparison. I explained the idea, uh, volume comparison. All right. Uh, so under this condition, you can verify these two things. These two things means you have Cauchy sequence because the space is complete. Any Cauchy sequence, I mean, not contains. Sorry, these two conditions means this contains a Cauchy sequence. All right. Then uh, since it's complete, a convergence. All right. So now I try to explain what what is the volume comparison, right? So uh, in Romanian geometry, there is a branch so-called comparison geometry. Basically, if your curvature has a lower bound, right? So uh, 
so there is a so-called comparison geometry. So the idea is, if you have a manifold, M, G, such as the section curvature has a lower bound, right? Actually bound by K, any number, positive, negative, zero. You can put a constant K. Then you look this uh, space form K. This is simply connected uh, a constant curvature curvature uh, equal to K, all right? The, the geometry, comparison geometry really says this, right? So if this is M, you take a geodesic triangle. You take geodesic triangle. And uh, actually, on the space form, two dimensions, if you have geodesic triangle, you can actually make a triangle with a equal sign. You can make that. You can actually compare these spaces. So if a curvature has a lower bound, this angle, let's see, alpha 1, this is alpha 2, corresponding alpha 3. So alpha i bigger or equal to alpha i, if I call this alpha 1, corresponding alpha 2, alpha 3, tilde. The curvature larger, the angle uh, 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 larger, right? If the side the same, the side the same. Right, just compare to this, right? Uh, <coughs> if they have a plan, plan has a curvature bigger or equal to zero, right? Uh, no, a sphere, a sphere has curvature bigger or equal to zero. So if you draw a triangle here, you see, by gauss Vanet theorem, you know that some triangle is bigger than uh, pi, right? Be, the model space would be pi, right? They are big. Actually, each individual are bigger. Each individual are bigger. And, uh, but anyway, so comparison like this. So this for section curvature, uh, we know Ricci curvature had to define that. That basically considers the average, average of section curvature. Uh, if you know that, uh, you know that. If you don't, don't worry about it. Just something, it's a build up on section curvature, it's average. Average, it's measured not like this, right? Average value cannot give you the comparison like a triangle comparison. However, it can compare the volume. The Ricci curvature has a lower bound. Uh, usually normalized uh, by a suitable constant depending on dimension. Uh, Ricci curvature has lower bound. The comparison draw like this. This is the manifold. You fix upon P, and this is your space form. However, space form has to be n dimension, same, same dimension, constant curvature. Then you take R ball. You take R ball here. This is a symmetric space, so it doesn't matter which point you, you take, right? Just take R ball. Then the volume of B, uh, R of the P, is less than the volume of BK, constant curvature K at the R, radius R. Always less than or equal to that. Uh, right? So uh, this is, uh, tells you the volume. And this relative volume comparison, this comparison says, not only have this, if you take two balls, the same uh, center, but different radius. Then, not only these holes, but you have these holes. You have this uh, so-called volume, big ball, BRP, divided by the ratio, actually, also uh, less than the ratio of the space form. R, uh, K. The ratio also the same. And this is actually easy to conclude that once you have curvature lower bound, once you give epsilon, this number, this number is what? It's exactly this number. Exactly this number. You can have upper bound, uniform bound for any rich bound below, the amplitude of bound above. The amplitude of bound above, you can always turn this to uh, the diameter. So this done dependent on R and this dependent on epsilon, if you choose this ball epsilon. And this number actually control the number of epsilon net in the manifold. Control this. So you have uniform bound dependent on epsilon. Okay, uh, so that's uh, basically the idea of prove this theorem. You basically prove this uh, uh, criteria. All right.
So uh, now, once you have this uh, very rough, now uh, I think I uh, I can only explain how the group structure coming in right, from our theorem. It's like this. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Now I try to explain this uh, how the group structure coming in. All right. So. You, again, you look at the remaining manifold. I mean, this remaining manifold, even I write that like this, right? This is like a, 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 a section curvature and diameter is very small, right? Very small. So this picture is now right. Diameter is very small, but uh, for the visual reason, we just write that. So you know you fix a point, you have a TP and you have exponential map. So when curvature uh, diameter is small, you can rescue this. Since this, the product of square is rescuing emerald, you can always make diameter equal to 1, where curvature is very small. That's the same condition, right? You have the product. Uh, it's uh, very small. You can normalize either of these factors become a 1. Another factor becomes small. So if you make that, then what this condition tells you? It tells you that exponential map is no singular, very large ball, no singular, right? So section curvature is bigger equal to, uh, 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 is less than equal to minus epsilon n, right? I mean, this is epsilon, I see, very small, epsilon. Less than minus, I mean, uh, less than epsilon, right? So that means that the conjugate, if your curvature has upper bound, the conjugate reader has lower bound. Uh, so that means this map is non-singular, non-singular, enlargeable, enlargeable, non-singular, OK. Non-singular means this is the curving map, right? Because non-singular is a local diffeomorphism, at least restrict to a, uh, restrict to a, a ball is become a carving man. But this radius is one, so this is very large. So you can imagine it's carving man. However, uh, now what is the fundamental group? So uh, since I have to change the condition. I have to change the condition. Actually, you can make both small, all right? I take square root of this, both small. You can rescue makes both small, sorry. So this is both small. When, when both are small, so uh, the, that transformation acting this, right? So if this is very small, this is carbonate. So if you look at one point here, it's uh, the orbit is like this, right? One point, and H actually very, very, very. Uh, the orbit is very dense, very dense. Uh, all right. So this is uh, right. Uh, let me just draw a picture. If you look this, you look this flat cylinder S one cross interval. You look this point tangent space, right? And uh, if you look this, right, it's, uh, it's basically the map is, uh, uh, is wrapping around the cylinder, right? Now, if you look at the point here, uh, the inverse point is this, right? If this inverse point is this, right? But if this is very small, if you look like a, a cylinder very small, the inverse point like that is like very dense here, right? Then here comes this. Uh, um, so the curvature almost zero, the curvature almost zero, and uh, this acting on isometry, right? This acting on locally, it's a pullback metric, it's a diffeomorphic pullback metric. Then uh, it's uh, Grammar observed that uh, uh, this enough to show that the fundamental group is almost nilpotent. So pi one, local fundamental group, I shouldn't say uh, the local fundamental group. At uh, this point, is almost new uh, He did this early work on this. He he can realize it's almost new And uh, then when the 
when you have this very small, you can consider sequence converge. Then this get the denser, denser. Eventually, this converge to new potent group. This is kind of rigidity in the group theory. Uh, if you have a discrete subgroup, which is new potent, uh, it's uh, sitting in big group. The big group is new potent as well. So that's kind of a uh, uh, rigidity. Then you see that. And I have two minutes uh, to say that. So uh, that's the grammar of the uh, uh, first result. And after that, Chigar, grammar of uh, Foucault, they prove that, they prove this, right? They prove this. Let me state the theorem. Then I'll finish this. This is uh, due to uh, Chigar, grammar of, and Foucault independently. Uh, same says this, right? If a sequence M n converge to X in gamma house of distance, by whatever reason, uh, they converge, right? We already have criteria like this. And this condition you can assume in convergence, at least subsequence. So if we assume this, if we assume the section curvature here I, I denote by this, uniform bounded, and X is compact. If the house of convergence, the diameter uniform bound. If x is compact, this diameter is finite, so this is uniform bound. Then you conclude that the following picture. Uh, they look the frame bundle, the frame bundle, right? Uh, that's the, uh, you have the many metric, then uh, you have so-called orthonormal basis, each point. You consider uh, uh, each point, every orthonormal basis, right? Uh, all the orthonormal basis at each point, that's a group, uh, orthogonal group, O n. Then you have a free bundle, fiber is ON. The free bundle also convert in gamma hot distance to some manifold. This is a manifold. And this convert to X. And the relation between this is, this is actually ON is convergent, but uh, it's uh, uh, coherent with its own action on this. So this also has so-called limit group action. It's also ON, and this is uh, uh, quotient group. This is a many manifold, has isometric group action, so the quotient like that. And this, on this level, you have fiber new potent. Uh, new potent that is like a gram of theorem, new potent group. So we understand completely up to a frame bundle what's going on. This is have vibration. And this has uh, far reaching uh, applications. Uh, application. Uh, uh, maybe just name one, since uh, let, let me name one, finish this. <laughs> mm, which one I like to? Okay, I like to name this one. Uh, this is my result. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's 96. Uh, the theorem says this, right? We, we know that. Uh, this is a theorem uh, in Romani geometry. This is a classical theorem, right? I'm uh, 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 I'm uh, 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 compact. I mean, I'm compact. Section curvature M is positive, so you find one fundamental group is finite, right? That's called the uh, uh, Bernays theorem. Then this is true even for Ricci curvature, positive, compact, positive. Now the question is. Uh, other than finite, what is the structure of the group, right? There, there, uh, there, there are so many uh, uh, finite groups. Which one can occur in a fundamental group, a uh, positive curve manifold? It turned out to be, for Ricci curvature, this is true for Ricci even positive, for Ricci curvature, any finite group, any finite group, gamma can be embedded into uh, some ON, N is a very large number. So if that's the case, the OM modular gamma, this is a manifold, right? It's a, it's a homogeneous space. It's a manifold. And also, uh, this, uh, you, you, if this is compact, you can give by invariant metric. And by invariant metric has a Ricci curve that's strictly positive. So this is asymmetric. So this manifold has a fundamental group gamma. That, but this is not simply connected. Actually, you really need to consider the carving group like this. But anyway, any finite group can, be a, can occur as a Ricci positive. The question is, can this be true uh, fundamental uh, for positive curvature? There is a uh, Chen conjecture says, no, 
such a group in even dimensions we know by single theorem, even dimension, the group only have two elements, right? It's either simply connect two elements. And Chen says that uh, there should be a restriction such as any Abelian subgroup is cyclic. Is cyclic. Uh, this is a 62, uh, around 62, Chen posed this question. And in uh, uh, <coughs> 99, uh, an example, control example found, disproved, I mean, conjecture. <coughs> the, the, their example is a uh, positive curve, seven dimensional manifold, fundamental group is not, uh, is, uh, is Z2 plus Z2, is abelian but not cyclic. Now, this theorem basically says using this, this uh, uh, based on this uh, uh, achievement, uh, this says trans conjecture. Uh, fails but only up to a certain level, says this. So MN compact, if you rescue the metric, you can always, uh, positive curve manifold, you can always make upper bound by one, lower bound by some constant zero, right? Then the conclusion is the fundamental group is virtually cyclic. It has a cyclic subgroup, has a cyclic subgroup such that the uh, uh, the fundamental group, the uh, cyclic group, is bounded by the dimension depending on uh, n, and there is condition provided not, nothing collapsing, nothing convergence appear in the statement. Actually, it's a proof require the whole machinery. So uh, uh, there, are, uh, there are other applications uh, in this type, but uh, I'm just trying to say uh, the convergence, the collapsing theory, uh, is, has been uh, uh, developed uh, in the uh, uh, 90s and found uh, uh, interesting implications uh, uh, in the last decade. Uh, okay, uh, I think I stop here. Sorry, but take a few minutes.